Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 75311, the UCS Razor Crest from the LEGO Star Wars theme. This set contains 6,187 pieces, 4 minifigures, and will retail for $599.99 in the US. This set does not come out until October 7th, 2022, oddly specific date, but it was sent to me early by the LEGO group through the LEGO Master Network, but of course all opinions expressed in this video are my own. Now as someone who's a very big fan of Star Wars, but hasn't been the biggest LEGO Star Wars collector in the past few years, I and many others like to joke that all LEGO Star Wars is is just big gray ships. And definitionally, yeah, that's exactly what this is. This is a massive gray Star Wars ship. But I have to say, I absolutely adore it. I adore it for the fact of what it represents, right? It perfectly captures the vehicle from the TV show. But I also love it in terms of just set design. This is the kind of thing I always wanted as a kid. And I'm so happy to finally have a set like this. Because while I think they look really cool, I personally do not have the UCS ATAT or Millennium Falcon. Because number one, I don't have that money. Number two, I don't have that space. But LEGO gave me the opportunity to review this one, I was like, yeah, of course. So this is my first time getting one of these large scale, but also minifigure scale sets. And wow, yeah, it's already one of my favorite things in my collection. This is going to be an interesting one to review, but yeah, let's take a look up a little bit closer. So we're going to start by taking the camera handheld and looking at the exterior. Because while I don't have a ton to say about it, because it is mostly just big gray parts, it does look really pretty and captures the shaping really well. One thing I will say is this is a super fun building experience. It was amazing seeing the way like all these different paneling sections connected together. And the way like, for example, this one right here opens up and this is how you can have the minifigures enter the vehicle. That's integrated so smoothly into the actual build, it's hardly even noticeable. And then little things too, like how this section comes out to have the landing gear right here, these giant triangular pieces out the back, and then like these angles up here, the way that this transitions from the side view to the top view, very smooth, like there's not really any major gaps in this entire build. Around the back of the vehicle, again, very flat. This back section can actually open up too, just pull this down, and a little platform comes out just like you see in the show. They even have like this little suspension system back here, which just makes it feel so much more realistic. Realistic. Like it's so fun to just pull that out like this flip this down, and then there's plenty of room for the minifigures in the set to walk in, or even like the bigger characters could fit too, or at least somewhat. They get kind of stuck up there, but they can at least fit on the platform and make it look like they're going in. But yeah, there's so much space there, it really feels to scale with what we actually have seen from the Mandalorian show. Other side of the ship, very similar, there may be some slight differences just to have like different blemishes and whatnot. Obviously the stickered part up at the front with the yellow is slightly different, and that's just to give it a more varied look and make it more accurate to the show. Landing gear, super detailed as well. I love all the gray bling all over it. Then of course you have the two giant blasters at the front. These do not have any spring load shooters or stud shooters in them. They're purely aesthetic, which obviously we'd expect because it is an 18 plus set, but that's something that makes me very happy to see because as someone who buys mostly play sets, those kind of things feel far too common. So it's nice to see them going for looks rather than play. Very smooth design on the top of the ship too. Again, these angles are incredible. Like look how those parts go together. That's just so impressive. It makes the entire vehicle feel like one cohesive object. Like obviously it still feels like Lego, but it reminds me a lot of the way like Speed Champions does things. Absolutely nothing is compromised here and I love that. Just more gray texturing and greebling all the way out the back. The little roller skate pieces are fun touches, I like the dark gray too. And then in the very center right here you have a little escape pod which is removable. Then we'll take a look at that in a moment. First we'll take a look at these giant engines out the sides and wow these are super well done. You have these gray tread tracks on them which does sort of artificially drive up the piece count a little bit. About like 200 pieces in this set are just these little tread pieces. But I'd say all things considered this is a pretty fairly priced set anyway, so that's not a huge deal. But yeah, I think they work really well to add that like nice little extra bit of detail and add some movement to the vehicle too if you want, like you want to imagine the engines powering up. Out the back too, there's more of those that surround this thruster. There's just a trans orange piece in the center right there and it's surrounded by all these different tan pieces. And then the rest of this engine slash thruster build is pretty good too. Again, very round shape, but you can see they do put some grabling on it to give it some texture. And I like how it's thinner at the back and then gets thicker around the middle and then gets short again at the very front. I don't know how to review something like this because it is mostly just like what you see is what you get, but what the designers did is a very good job. So like I don't really have any criticisms, I just have to acknowledge like yeah this is super well done. And there's a quick look at the underside if you're curious. The other engine slash thruster is pretty much exactly the same though with maybe some slightly different gray bling, some dark gray where there was light gray on the other, some tan where there wasn't on the other. Oh, that came out of place a little bit. But yeah pretty much most of the same like round build. And I think that's about it for the exterior. As you can see I still have that escape pod removed so let's take a look at that up a little bit closer. Here's a little escape pod and something funny about it is it's about the same size as the escape pod in the smaller Razor Crest that came out a few years ago. And considering that this entire set is so much bigger than that one, it's funny that the escape pod stayed mostly the same size. But yeah, pretty simple little build. You can open it up, place a minifigure in there. For example, I'll put the Mandalorian in. 
and then I'll close it back up around him. And there you go. You can kind of see his face with that window. Maybe he wasn't the best choice because he does have such a dark helmet. But yeah, that's just a fun little play slash display option that you have. But now I think it's finally time to start moving inside. So first we're going to take a look at the like driver's seat cockpit area. And this comes to the first part of the step that I'm not the biggest fan of. Now don't get me wrong, it still looks good. My complaint with this is there's no way to really lock it onto the build. You see, the entire time this thing just sits here kind of loose. Like it is set in place, there is a slot for it, but there's no actual connection. If you were to turn this upside down, it would fall right off. And I think the purpose of that is for it to be easily removable for play, and also so that it doesn't take away from the look of the build by having some sort of connection system there. But I can't say I'm the biggest fan of that. I wish it connected in some sense, because I never feel like I have this on right. I feel like it's always wiggling around. Even just a couple studs underneath for it to latch onto would be something. But yeah, at the moment, it's nothing. It can just move all around like this. So I guess if you plan to use this set purely for display purposes and absolutely nothing else, that's not a big deal. But if you plan to be opening this up at all, it might be something that's worth customizing. Because yeah, for $600, I wish this connected a little bit better. Because like, look how loose this entire section is. And the UCS set, I can't say I'm a fan of that. But taking it off, we get to the actual cockpit area. And I'm pretty sure I said it earlier in this review, but oh my goodness, this is exactly what I always wanted as a kid. It always bothered me how like big Star Wars ships could fit one, maybe two characters characters in the cockpit, but this, this is the exact right scale. The main seating area has a seat for the Mandalorian, tons of control panels around him, two seats behind him, and walking space behind that. You could fill up this cockpit with tons of characters, and I feel like that can really help capture the life and personality that we see in the show. And look at all those control panels, by the way. They're all printed parts, none of them exclusive to this set. At least I don't think so. That one might be, I don't recognize that one. But if that is an existing part, let me know in the comments. But yeah, they got everything here, including like the little ball piece that Grogu liked to play with. Behind that is a little door which can be opened up, and that just leads to another open area where you can post characters. And the instructions, they tell you that this is a good spot to put Grogu's cradle. And in the back, you have this little build of the container containing the frog eggs, as a reference to Season 2 of The Mandalorian. There's also a ladder right here for a character to get down to the bottom floor. However, if you yourself want to get down to the bottom floor, there's a few ways to do that. First, you can move, like, this entire seating section out of the way. There's how that looks removed. The main seat at the front will stay in there, but the rest of it comes out. But if you want to see the full underneath area, you're going to have to take apart the top of the so you could take this front piece off right here like this, the giant engines off like this, this little bar back here, and finally this flat section out the very back can come off too. And with all that removed, you can now see the full interior. There's of course a few other ways to see in, such as the opening out the back, but if you actually want to post figures in there, obviously it's not easy to stick your hands in here. There's also little doors on each side which open up, which I showed you a little bit earlier, and that gives you a bit of access in, but the easiest way to get in if you want to post figures or just see the interior is from the top. So there's a few little nods to the show in here. You have Boba Fett's armor from season two when the Mandalorian had recovered it from Cobb Vanth, and unlike LEGO's official marketing video would lead you to believe, these are not new colors to these parts, these are the same exact ones that came on the Boba Fett figure from last Last year, so I'm not going to go over the prints here because, yeah, it's nothing new. There's this little closet type build with a stickered piece on top. I believe this says something along the lines of baby on board, but if I'm wrong about that, let me know in the comments. And then if you open these doors up, you can see there's actually a bunch of different weapons stored in there. This entire section is removable, so I'm going to take it out to show you it up a little bit closer. But yeah, there you go. You can see you have different sized blasters. You have three tiny ones, a medium sized one in silver, and then a long one also in black. There's how it looks in the back, nothing too special going on there. But I like that it is removable, that's a nice touch. There's a few crates on the side which can also be removed. One has a little bowl on top, one has these blue pieces on top, and if we open them up, you can see this one has a thermal detonator inside, this one also has a thermal detonator inside, and then the larger wooden crate has binoculars inside. There's also this little tan build, I'm not sure exactly what this is, I don't remember it from the Mandalorian. Maybe it's some sort of power supply, I don't think they're going for a gunk droid, but it looks somewhat similar. I'm not sure if anybody knows exactly what that is, let me know in the comments. But it uses a black whip piece out the back that connects like a wire to the side of the vehicle. On the other side we have the little carbonite freezing chamber, so this is the chamber itself, you can see you'd stand a minifigure in there and then they'd get frozen by the carbonite. And then next to that we have the area where the actual frozen people are stored. These two are both unique stickered parts and can be removed moved. Take the other one off here too. And you can see the two stickered carbonite characters in the set are some sort of human character and a Rodian. Now I don't recognize either of these characters from the actual Mandalorian show, so they may just be generic characters made up for this set. But again, as I've said multiple times in this video, if you know who these are exactly, please let me know in the comments. That's about it for actual detail in here. You can see there's a little bit of wiring back there, but there's not really many other show references or anything. Kind of wish there was a bit more going on here, but at the very least there's a lot of figure space, which I cannot complain about. Then coming to the front 
front section, this is where the two doors open up, as you can see. Not much going on here. Again, room to post figures. Here's where that ladder comes down. But at the very end, we have the bed where the Mandalorian sleeps. Now, this is also removable, and you can see underneath you just have some wiring. I really love the use of that whip piece in red as wiring. That's a very cool recolor for that part. Don't know if it's new for this set, but I feel like it's one that's very useful to have. You can see there is some sort of control panel next to where the bed is kept. I'm sorry the camera's like shaky or low quality. It is very hard to get this thing in here. But there's a look at that bed up a little bit closer. Very simple little building. You can see it's got like a little water bottle at the back, but there's not much else to it. And when you want to put it back, you can just slide it right back in like this. Or oops, I had it backwards the other way around. But I think that's about it for the actual interior and for the Razor Crest itself. So now let's take a look at the UCS plaque, the other build in this set. Then we'll take a look at the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts. The only other build in this set is the actual UCS plaque. And it's just like most of the others. You have room for all the figures, as well as a sticker piece that gives you information on the ship. There's a look at all that up a little bit closer if you're curious. It does come with a little cradle for Grogu, which is very exciting. This is something that's obviously seen very prevalently in the show, but we never actually got in LEGO form aside from the Ava Encounter last year, but it wasn't the right color. And I believe this is just a recolor of the Ava Encounter build, but it is still cool to finally get. It is maybe a little bit too big compared to other like normal minifigures, but for Grogu it fits him really well. So no complaints from me, I'm happy with it. And then finally the set also comes with a blurg. These guys were seen in the Mandalorian Season 1 and they were very funny. So it's very cool to finally have one physically in LEGO form because it took him a while to make it. But yeah, he's finally here and he's adorable. I believe that is an all new printed eyepiece. I love how they did the teeth on him and then the tiny little arms. The legs are iffy. It makes them very fragile because they're not connected all too well. I maybe wish those were done a little bit differently, but it's not a huge deal. Also, he's supposed to have a tail off the back. It's a quick side tangent. I currently live on my college campus because I'm attending classes there, but I film all my leg reviews when I come home for the weekend because my whole recording studio is here. So the Blurg's tail must have fallen off at college and I forgot to bring it back here with me. But I'll bring this guy back to campus and I'll uh, add some footage and post to show you what the tail looks like. It doesn't change the overall look of him too much though. But yeah, he's adorable. He's got these tiny little arms. There's room for a figure to sit in the top. And there's what that like actual seating area looks like. Kind of weirdly placed sticker. Not sure like why that was necessary, but okay. But yeah, very happy to get this guy. But one comment on him is he is very fragile. The reason I don't have his tail is because he shattered a few times trying to move this thing. So just be careful with him. He doesn't seem very designed for play. But regardless, he's awesome and I love him. And now moving to the minifigures. Here are the first two in the set. We of course have the Mandalorian himself and we have Grogu. Now this is an all new exclusive version of the Mandalorian for this set based on his appearance from episode one of the show. And wow, this guy is amazing. So he has an all new helmet with some added printing at the top. And even though it's a very small change, it's just black on top of gunmetal gray. It makes all the difference. That looks significantly better. It makes the helmet feel very high quality. I absolutely adore how that looks. For the first time ever, he also has arm printing. I guess not the first time ever. We have gotten Mandalorians with arm printing, but not the episode one variant. So that's very cool to see. So now the level of detail in this guy matches the level of detail on the Beskar Mando that we got earlier last year. I love all the metallic printing on the torso too with like the somewhat rusty design. And the color combination here is great too. I honestly think I prefer this guy to Beskar Mando like in terms of the actual minifigure. The colors are just a lot more fun and there's just such a high level of detail. I really really like this. And then Grogu is the same figure we've gotten in every other set. Kind of wish they updated him a little bit just to make him special with this set. But it's not a huge deal because he is pretty good for what he is. They did him pretty perfectly the first time around. There's a look at Mando's back torso print. Again very detailed. Detailed. I love the metallic silver for the chip paint and everything. And then also, this is the second set ever to include the Mandalorian's face print. It's the same one that came in the Mandalorian's N1 Starfighter from earlier this year, but I think it does a pretty good job of capturing Petro Pascal's look. He uses the all-new skin color, which is very cool to see. And then, unlike that set, he also comes with a hair piece. It's not a new piece but it fits him really well. And yeah, that's another just like really cool thing to have. The figure looks incredible like this too. I really, really love it. And then the other two figures in the set are Mithril and Kuil. I think that's how that's pronounced. Mithril is from the very first scene in the very first episode of The Mandalorian, and he's not a character I ever felt like I needed or I ever felt like it was important to get, but for a set like this, I think he is the perfect exclusive because Quill's a very important character to The Mandalorian, so I wouldn't be opposed to him coming in a cheaper set, but Mithril's the kind of thing that like casual fans don't probably care about at all, but for hardcore fans of the show, he's a nice exclusive to get. And his face print is done super well. I love all the different shades of blue. The uh, printing is very sharp. They capture like the alien look of his face Really well. I don't know if they got his facial expressions perfect, because I kind of feel like he was more animated than this, but that's a very little thing to criticize. His actual torso, though, feels rather generic to me. I mean, it looks good, it works for what it is, but it's nothing all too special. Same thing with around the back, but that head print again, very, very good. And if I remove his handcuffs, there you can see that full torso print. Quail is pretty good, too. I remember from initial reactions, people were worried that the headpiece was, like, too long, the wrong shape, and we were all asking, hey, why the long face? But having him in hand, it's actually not that bad. The proportions are a little bit 
bit wacky, but I think it's for the best. It doesn't feel out of place at all. And honestly, even looking at my camera screen right now, the proportions look way worse on camera than they do in person. In person, I feel like it's a pretty accurate representation of how he looks from the show. The little white beard printing on the side's a nice touch too. Obviously, this is an all-new head mold for this set. It feels very high quality. And then the torso's good too. Again, just a brown torso, so not a ton going on. But he's got a little backpack out the back. And there's how he looks with that removed. I like his scarf too. It's cute. But yeah, no, genuinely, I think all the figures of this set are pretty solid. Don't really have any complaints with any of them. But what are my thoughts on this set overall? I do love this set overall, probably one of my favorite sets of all time, but that doesn't mean I have no complaints with it. I think the fact that this is minifigure scale is maybe a little deceptive, because yes, it is minifigure scale and has tons of room to post figures and whatnot, but it is definitely not a play set, because oh my goodness, this thing is fragile. Moving this thing around for the purpose of this review, so many pieces came off. Like, if you notice any pieces missing in one shot of the review and then they were fixed in the next shot, or something was sort of dislodged and then fixed in the next shot, that's because touching this thing at all makes it fall apart. Not drastically, like, it's always very fixable, and if you're just moving it from shelf to shelf, it's very easy to do. They actually provide instructions in the back of the book, like, hey, pick it up from here exactly, but I would just be trying to turn it for this review and a piece would fall off. So I guess it depends on what your plans are with this set. I know there are some parents who like to buy bigger sets for their kids, and I do not recommend this set for this. Even if your kid's a huge fan of Mandalorian, if they're young and are planning on playing with this set, unfortunately, I feel like it's just gonna fall apart. It's not a good set for play. But as a set for display, I think it's really fantastic. They capture the look of the Racer Crest so, so well. Such a high level of detail, so many different parts used. It feels straight out of the show, and the interior is really good when the set's not falling apart. So would I recommend this set? For collectors, yes. For kids, no. Now, obviously, the set is $600, so there's not gonna be that many kids buying this set anyway. But for anyone in the younger set who is considering it, just be aware that, yeah, that's what this is like. In terms of the price, obviously, $600 is a lot of money, but compared to the Millennium Falcon and the at, -AT I think this is the most fairly priced, like, minifigure scale UCS set, and that's really funny to say, because I know, $600, that's a lot of money. But no, this thing is genuinely massive, easily the biggest set I own, both in terms of piece count and scale. Price per part is good, you get a decent number of minifigures here, obviously there could be more, but for what the set is, I think you get what you need here. But yeah, considering this has more parts than the ATAT -AT for $250 less, and still has, like, big parts and everything, again, obviously not for everybody, because $600 is $600. But if you're somebody who has the money and does enjoy collecting these big giant Star Wars sets, I do think this one is worth the very, very high price they're charging for it. But those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please press like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do like a video just like this one almost every day, so if you subscribe, be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!